I am trying a new setup today. I never want to sit on my couch and just film a video because the light comes in from the windows over here and then I feel like I'm all uneven. But I was getting ready to film this video and it is the gloomiest day of all time outside and there was no natural light anyways. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna set up my ring light because yes, I do have one of those and I never ever use it. I will say I prefer natural light to a ring light. Also, if I move too far, you can see it. Honestly, usually when I edit my videos, I, I sit at my desk sometimes, but a lot of times I'm just sitting on my couch here with a cup of coffee as I have right now and I'm editing. So I thought I would take you along with me today as I edit a video. Specifically, today we are editing a vlog. I get questions on what effects I use, what music I use, how I put it all together, what programs I use. So I thought that we would walk through it together and edit a vlog together. I've never done a video like this and I thought it would be something a little bit fun, a little bit fun to try out. I have been editing videos for about two and a half years now. I started my channel in October of 2020 and it's definitely been two and a half years of a lot of trial and error. And within the last like eight months, I feel like I finally got my videos down to somewhat of a science. Let's jump into talking about how I edit my videos and what the process is for me to put a vlog together. So I filmed my vlog, what comes next? So the first step in my editing process, after I film a vlog, I need to upload the footage onto my laptop. I use a Mac to edit. Everything's gonna be Mac specific. So sorry if you're a Windows user, I am not. I upload all of my footage onto my laptop. I use Canon cameras, so I usually have footage on my Canon M50, and then a lot of my B-roll clips, I just use my iPhone. Now, these files are really big, so I have an external hard drive that I upload all my footage onto because I learned very quickly when I first started my YouTube channel that unless you're deleting every single thing you do as soon as you upload it, your Mac is gonna run out of space very quickly. So I would recommend getting an external hard drive. I have a Samsung T7 Shield, so I will upload everything directly onto this external hard drive. This is my second hard drive I've used, and the other one I have saved in case I ever need to go back to any of that footage. Let's open up my hard drive. As you can see, I have a folder for personal things. I have a folder for my YouTube channel and I have a folder for my music. So we're gonna go to my YouTube channel. I have a folder from 2022, 2023, and then I have my Final Cut Library folder, which we'll get to that in a minute. So within my 2023 folder, I the way I do it, this is kind of back and forth. Sometimes I'll date the video as the date I filmed it. Sometimes I'll date the video as the day I'm planning on uploading it. And then I have a folder for my full videos. So every time I finish a video, it goes in this folder. So the vlog that we're editing today is a week in my life vlog. So as you can see, I already uploaded all the footage in here. So we're going to take this footage and we are going to put it into my editing software. I use Final Cut Pro, let's open it up. So as you can see, the last project that I edited is open. We need to make a new project and a new folder for this vlog we're going to edit now. If you remember one minute ago, when I showed you that Final Cut library folder in my external hard drive, it's because I edit everything in Final Cut on my external hard drive. Even if you save your files on your hard drive, but you edit it directly on your laptop, you are going to run out of storage fast. I ran into this issue a ton on my old laptop. Before I started editing on my external hard drive, I would always be running out of space. I would always be so confused. I would never know why. Um, and that's why, because <laughs> these files are pretty big that we're working with. So it's just easier in the long run to edit on this. Usually I keep my last three or four videos I've edited previously. And once three or four weeks have passed since the video's gone live, I'll delete the folder because I don't need it anymore. But I like to keep it around just in case. So what we need to do is upload all that footage in my external hard drive onto Final Cut. So I usually just press this import button at the top. You also can put new event because these are all technically events within a library. And here I'm going to go to my external hard drive, my YouTube channel folder, my 2023 folder. We're gonna go down to this week in my life vlog folder. And then up here in this right corner, I'm going to create a new event in, I'm gonna select my external library, so it goes on that. And we're going to date it. So we're gonna date it May 2nd, 2023. And I'm just going to Command A, which is Command All, select all the files, and I import all. Oops, I also forgot I need to write week in my life. And now you see I have all of my files. Next, we are still on this project from the 
previous video I was editing last time I opened up Final Cut. So we need to make a new project. So this was our event. Now within this event, we're going to make a new project. So I'm usually going to title the project the same as the event. So 5, 2, 2023, Weekend My Life NYC. And then my settings are already set up for what I usually use, but my video is always in 1080p HD. Um, I do 1920 by 1080 because that's the size of YouTube videos. And then my frame rate, I usually edit at 23.98. That's because that is the frame rate that I shoot my videos on. Should I be shooting them on a bit of a higher frame rate? Maybe. I've been thinking about that lately. Um, whatever. Frame rate's very important though because once you set your frame rate in a project and you start your project, you cannot change it. I learned that the hard way once. So now we have all the footage in Final Cut, we have the project created, now we have to actually edit the video. I typically edit my videos within two phases. The first phase is the storyboard. So that essentially is me getting every single clip onto the storyboard of what order it's gonna be in, cutting things down, doing zoom in, zoom outs, like preliminary ones if I see a moment where I'm like, oh, that should be a zoom in, that should be a zoom out. And I just get all the clips on the board. I don't think about anything else. I just lay all of them down. Once I do that, then I go into phase two. And phase two is where I add the music, the sound effects, the transitions, I edit the sound, I add color grading, I do all of that. This works the best for me because once I'm going back and adding these color grading effects and sound effects and transitions and all of that, I also can more fine tune the clips, cut things down a little bit more, edit things I missed. And then once I add all of that, then I'll watch it all the way through again. I guess that could be phase three. So I guess I'll have the screen up and we'll kind of edit together. If you are brand new to editing the storyboard, at least that's what I call it, <laughs> it is down here. So I will essentially just drag and drop clips onto the storyboard and put them all together. Here is my very first clip of the vlog. So I'm literally gonna just click on it and drag it onto the storyboard. And here it is. Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog. Once I place a clip here, you can see how long this clip is. I say a lot of ums, I say a lot of likes, I do a lot of thinking. I don't speak as seamlessly as it may look like I do in my vlogs. So I go through and I cut out all of those unnecessary parts that are gonna make it a little slower and harder to watch. So the way I do that is I can splice a clip. The shortcut for that is Command B. So I usually just click a little Command B and splice it. So for example, I'm gonna say hello and then I'm probably gonna say something like um because I can't ever have one cohesive thought, I'll cut that out. Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog. Um. So I just cut that whole part out, so now it's gonna flow together. Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog. It's currently Monday. Movie magic. It's like 1.45 right now. I didn't film my morning because I felt like I was just doing the same. I like to add zoom in, zoom outs, framing changes to enhance anything that I find funny or maybe call specific attention to something, like I want you to look at something. I and mean, this is a good, a good moment. I feel like I have deja vu because this happens at the beginning of all of my vlogs, but my cat Bennett will do something silly or crazy or funny and I'll want to call attention to it. Instead of editing it out of the vlog, I think it's fun to keep it in. So he's playing with a toy in this clip and I cropped the specific clip that I want to zoom in on. I'm going to go here to this little cropping tool button and I'm going to press Ken Burns, which is a zoom in. Now let's see how that clip pans out. I didn't film my morning because I felt like I was just doing the same. So I like to play around with effects and things like this. Like for example, I don't like that zoom in as much as I thought I would. So instead I'm going to change it to crop and I'm just going to crop in immediately at that clip. I didn't film my morning because I felt like I was just doing the same. It's like I... See, and that was better. That was way better. You, it, it drew your attention better. So I'm gonna keep editing and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about this. Um, okay, like before, it's actually gonna be May, but I wanna get this video up sooner than later. And Bennett, say hi. And Bennett's here to lick himself and say hello. An issue I have is that I just talk and talk and talk like this whole, I don't know what this is. It's gone. So I just edited my first two clips together. As you can see, there's a lot of cuts in here and I have some zoom in. There's a lot going on. Um, so that's essentially what I do for the whole storyboard. It's literally just a lot of dragging, 
watching, splicing. You also probably saw me moving clips over instead of cutting sometimes. It's easier for me to just drag it and shorten the clip a little bit. But I do this for every single one of my clips on my videos. Looking back, maybe I should have um, done the storyboard before I decided to film this video because it has been a little over an hour it, that took me to put the storyboard together. So if you're curious, the video is 25 minutes long. It took me a little bit over an hour to put all the clips in, but they're all there. Now we can move to phase two. So as you can see, I have all of these clips laid out and it literally it's just the cuts of the clips. And then if I have any zoom ins or anything, I added that. And then when I go through in the second phase, I might add a few more. But for the most part, I have everything laid out. This vlog was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I like forgot how much stuff I filmed. I filmed all of this a week ago. So I was like, oh, I feel like I was watching all of it for the first time. And like I said before, phase two is essentially me going in and working on the music the sound effects the transitions editing the actual sound of the clips color grading things adding an intro adding an outro um and any like text screens anything like that before we jump into phase two i want to talk a little bit about the music that i put in my vlogs which is a perfect segue to talk about today's sponsor epidemic sound i feel like this is the most seamless and perfect sponsorship i have done thus far on my channel because this perfectly ties into exactly what I'm talking about in this video and I have been a proud user of Epidemic Sound since 2021. So I've been using it for two years. I have loved it and I feel like it's really elevated all of my vlogs to the level that I want them to be at. So we're going to talk about them a little bit. So again, I want to thank Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Epidemic Sound is a platform that provides royalty-free music that can be used in your content. They have over 40,000 tracks and 90,000 sound effects. There are so many different options you can choose from, and this makes Epidemic Sound an amazing resource for literally any type of creator. If you are new to making videos on YouTube or are just learning about the rules and regulations of everything on YouTube, restriction-free music is essential to creators. And Epidemic Sound is the perfect solution to this because they provide you with the digital rights to these songs while also supporting the creators and musicians who have made them. Epidemic Sound provides personal plans as well as commercial plans. So whether you are running a business or just running a vlog channel like myself, there are options for you. Once you connect your YouTube channel and they get the general vibe of your channel, they will recommend you songs on your homepage that they think would be great to use in your vlogs. You can search by mood, genre, tempo, beats per minute. Epidemic Sound has been my go-to music provider on my YouTube channel for the last two years and I could not recommend them enough. So if you are interested in Epidemic Sound, then go ahead and click on the link in my description to get a 30-day free trial. It's super easy to sign up. You can cancel anytime. I think music is a very important part of editing YouTube videos and I think it's worth it to invest in the best. So once again, click on that link in my description to sign up for your free trial of Epidemic Sound. And thank you so much again to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to how I actually use this music in my YouTube videos. I am one of those people who I, unless for some reason I get 2 million subscribers and I can't find the time to edit my videos anymore, I don't think I'll ever let someone else edit for me. I really enjoy this part of the process and I think a lot of what makes my vlogs my vlogs is in the editing. So let's start phase two. The first thing I do is I always add my intro screen and my outro screen. So I have this project called Sample Effects that <laughs> has templates essentially of my intro and outro. So we're gonna go into the sample effects. I have my outro right here. We're gonna copy that, go back into my project. We're gonna paste it. And then we're gonna do the same thing with my intro. My intro, as you can see, is like old clips from a vlog back in January, whenever I put this in there. So what I do is I copy the effects that are on these clips and then I paste them onto the new clips that I wanna add. <laughs> now I find four clips that I think are good to sum up the video. Usually I like to do my first clip and my last clip as some kind of aesthetic New York City clip. And then I like to do my middle clips as me talking and doing things. I don't know why, that's always what I do for my intros. I've been using this intro for probably a year and a half now. I think I started doing this around, like right before I did my apartment series, which was at the end of 2021. I found a clip earlier that I knew I wanted to use as my first one. It was a pretty clip of a taxi driving by. Here it is. So now I'm going to copy the effects from this clip. So I've gotten a few questions in the past how I make my intros look like this. They look kind of grainy and film style. And the answer is I use the Final Cut effects 
and I use a custom LUT from a free LUT pack that I downloaded online. Um, I'll link that below if I can find it. I got this a while ago, so I'm gonna have to find it. So as you can see, there's kind of a lot going on right here because I've copied and pasted these effects for years. So things get picked up and dropped, but the basic combination is I have Grand Budapest on 0.5, which is the custom LUT that I downloaded. I have film grain on 50%. Oh, I have two film grains on 50%. See, don't ask me why. This is like a bad science. I have a second custom LUT on 0.5. I have a third film grain on 50% and then I have HDR tools on one and aged film on 50%. And a lot of times I'll kind of play around with this if it looks kind of weird. Like sometimes I'll paste this and it'll look too pink or too grainy. Um, but my main things I use are film grain, aged film, Grand Budapest, and HDR. Those are my main four. And then I play around with them, add more, take away less from there. We're gonna copy this clip and then we're going to click on the new clip. Usually a regular paste, you would just do Command V, but if you wanna paste settings on Final Cut, you do Shift Command V. That's gonna bring up this screen and you can choose what you wanna paste. So I wanna paste the audio because it's silent. I don't want the audio on it. And then it'll paste all of these effects on. So if for some reason I don't wanna do one of these, I can uncheck it. For some reason there's a crop on this, so I'm gonna uncheck that because I want it to be its original size. And we're gonna press paste. Now, Look at that, this clip has the effects. One too many film grains for me though, so we're gonna uncheck that. And then from there I can do anything else I want with it. So this, I might use this transform feature right here. You can make clips bigger or smaller. I'm gonna make it a little bigger and I'm going to, it's a little crooked. I'm gonna try to straighten it out. Now I'm gonna drag over the words hello onto this clip and then I am going to shorten the clip to match the hello. And then down here, the intro music I have, I'm gonna drag it over as well. So these are all at the front of the video and I'm gonna delete this initial clip. So then I'm gonna repeat this with the rest of the clips. I feel like this clip of me opening the freezer. We'll probably put that as the third clip. Paste this, shorten this clip. And now we have our new intro. So this is just the template that I always use um, for the beginning of my vlog. So now we can jump in to the actual vlog. Next, we're gonna go through and we're gonna edit the audio. This is something that I recently started doing in the past two or three months because I kept getting a comment and it wasn't from a lot of people, but I got this comment a few times saying that there was a loud like shh noise in the back of my videos. And I think that comes from my mic that I film on. It makes the audio better, but then it gives this like shushing noise in the back. Never really bothered me. Not many people commented on it, but the more people comment on it, the more I became aware of it and the more it like started making me really frustrated. So I went in and I started trying to learn how to edit audio and I found an audio setting that works for me that now I can just copy and paste it on my clips. So we're gonna go grab that. So I'm gonna go to my previous vlog and I'm just gonna copy one of my first speaking clips. So we have this copied in the same way that we pasted those effects, we're gonna paste this sound. I'm gonna click on the first clip because I like to test it. I'm gonna say Shift Command V. And as you can see, the only effect on this clip is audio. So we're gonna paste this. It's a little more centered in, it's a little more isolated on my voice. There's not that shushing sound in the background. So I make sure to paste that on all of my videos. So in Final Cut, you have your settings over here on the right hand side. For the clip, I click on the audio settings and I select equalization. There's an equalizer that you can play with. To be honest, I don't really know what any of this necessarily means. What I did is I went in and I played around with it till I found something I liked. So my settings, this eight hertz bar, I have at negative two and the 16 kilohertz bar I have at negative 3.25. And then I select voice isolation and it defaults at 50%. I lower that to 20% because the 50 is a little, the audio doesn't sound too great. And that's really all I put on my clips, but it makes a world of a difference. So we're gonna go ahead and paste this on all of my other camera clips, but we need to make sure we don't paste them on my iPhone recorded clips because that's a whole different thing. Now for iPhone clips, we're just gonna go through those as we add the music and kind of play around with what sounds better. Sometimes I edit the clips, sometimes I don't. It just depends how much background noise is going on, especially if I'm on the street with a loud car or something walking around. So we'll look at that as we add the music. So now let's go back to the beginning. I have an Epidemic Sound folder, which shows all of my songs that I've downloaded from Epidemic Sound, which are a lot. I have a lot of classic songs I use. Like for my intro, for the most part, I have a song that I like to default to. 
And the good part about Epidemic Sound is they have instrumental versions of songs that have lyrics, and I prefer to use that because a lot of times I'll play music in the background while I'm talking, so I don't want lyrics going on. This song is called Just Got Eyes For You, and it's my favorite song to play. You've probably heard it at the beginning of my vlogs. I'm gonna put this song in, but we can't leave it at the volume of zero because it's going to be so loud and you won't be able to hear what I'm saying. Hello, everybody. That's awful. I typically have my resting background music sitting at negative 35 to negative 38. Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog. Yeah, I think it's currently negative Monday. 38 is great. If I have a zoom in on my face or some kind of change in framing, I'll usually cut out the audio to make it all centered in. So as you can see right here, I have a zoom in. So I'm going to cut the audio. I splice it the same way that I splice my clips with Command-B. And I'm just going to move it over. So now the audio is going to cut out when it zooms in and make you focus just a little bit more on that clip. So I'm going to go through and do that with all of my clips. And see, here's a moment where I realize that I kind of want to put a little zoom in and cut the music out. But I didn't know that in the first initial thing. I'm just realizing it now. Because we are... You gotta have a blast. I filmed my plane with me. I was really putting off filming that because I was like, Ugh. I put the music under my first two clips. Now there's going to be like a passage of time. I said I was gonna do something and I don't film again until after I've done it. So I'm gonna add a little transition to show that we're changing sceneries, we're changing times. I usually like to do this in situations where it's not so obvious. Like if I was gonna be outside in the next clip, obviously we're doing something else. But with this, I'm in the same shirt in the same area. So we gotta add some kind of swipe or slide that makes it clear that we are we've moved on so i'm gonna add this slide okay. i filmed my plan with me i was really putting off filming that so i usually like to accompany this movement with a sound effect to kind of show the viewer like yeah we're moving we're doing something else so i like to add a little swoosh sound effect i feel like most creators like to do that when they have some kind of slide so we're gonna go to my sound effects folder and i have this little swoosh from epidemic sound that i'm gonna add in right here so cool. now it's gonna look like this because we are gonna have a blast. I filmed my plan with me. Now we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna keep using the same song for this part though. So it's really putting off. You would be amazed. We have another zoom in, so I'm gonna move this over and have it be silent on the zoom in. Anytime I have some sort of B-roll clips where I'm not speaking, I want the music to be the focus because it's gonna be awkward if it's like super low volume music and I'm doing something where I'm not talking. So here, I have two clips happening where I don't say anything. So I'm gonna split my audio down here where I'm not speaking in the two clips and I'm gonna turn up the volume to negative 15. So now, as it moves to the two clips, instead of it being awkward and silent, it's gonna kind of fill that space. It's already 2.30. Yogurt. And then it goes back down when I talk again. So we're gonna do that again. Oh. 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 So now we have approached our first outdoor b-roll shot compilation. I like to color grade any outdoor b-roll shots because I just think it makes them look nicer cleaner. I have the same system for these outdoor b-roll shots. We're going to copy and paste a saved set of effects that I use on all of my videos. Then we're going to go back to our project and we are going to paste this setting. So we want the volume settings on for this because we do want the clip to be muted. And then we want the custom LUT and the film grain. So this is similar to the intro screen. I have the Budapest custom LUT and then film grain on it, but none of the other effects because I want it to look a little more natural. We're gonna uncheck if anything was transformed or cropped because we don't need to do that. And we're gonna paste. And now you can see how this clip is just a little more elevated. Um, this clip honestly is kind of bad. I feel like we can fix this a little bit. I like to use the transform if I wanna make something a little more straight. Sometimes I film things a little crooked on accident. And then we're gonna paste this effect onto all the other clips except for any talking clips. So now you can see this effect is on all of these clips. Sometimes some clips get a little more red, so I'll go through, like this one could be at a 0.3. It's a little too red. And then we get to this talking clip. Just went into Sephora. I don't typically like to put the filter on talking clips because see how red I am all of a sudden? I'm not a big fan of that. We're gonna put on this voice isolation and go to 30% and see what that sounds like. Just went into Sephora. I really wanted the new Rare Beauty lip oil. So it just said, it's literally the littlest difference, but it centers in just a little bit more. So now we need to add music. 
to this little b-roll clip i think what we're gonna do though is this song actually picks up a little bit there's a part that i like to use for b-roll clips like this so we're gonna sync that up and make the volume louder and have this song just go right into my b-roll so there's a part where like a beat kicks in in this song so we're going to turn up the volume and for any b-roll clips where the volume is the main focus i'd like to do it at negative 10 and we're going to have this volume kind of kick in in the clip where there's still sound so it seamlessly transitions into the b-roll clip all ready to go let's go to glass mm. So all I did was cut the clip where I wanted the volume to turn up, have the new volume at negative 10, the old volume at the low one, and then I did a little, little fade in, so it seamlessly fades in. And now we're gonna give this song a little bit of an outro. I cut a little bit. We're gonna go back down to like a negative 30, and hopefully this makes it go together so it sounds like the song is ending as I'm walking back into the apartment. I feel like every single vlog recently, I just I go into Trader Joe's. I leave. That works. That works. It's not my best cut, but it works. And now the music fades out, and now I'm going to talk Joe's. in silence I for a little bit. Dance. So how did I spend $50? So I just talked in silence for a little bit. I love music in the background of my vlogs. I know some people don't like it. I think it's fun, engaging. So after this zoom in, I think it's the $50. perfect time to I throw in... A little song so we're just gonna try to find like a very simple song that just kind of has a beat in the background you don't even notice it's there let's do this one we're gonna put it to that volume let's we're gonna do negative 35 this time these solid bars between clips that means that i cut part of that clip out in between so they're essentially two new clips next to each other if you see this dotted line in between clips it means that it's part of the same clip and it goes one into the next which usually is a cue to me that it's just a zoom in or something. So that's a little life hack I've picked up. So it's easier for me to just find those clips, cut them, move them. And now we're going to turn up the music for these little clips of me putting my groceries away. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have the song end as I am sitting down. So it's going to end as I start talking. All right. And now I got to do my favorite mm -hmm. evening activity. I don't typically color grade normal vlog clips unless it's super yellow. If I'm filming at night in my apartment and my lights are on, I do have another thing that I can copy and paste. So for example, here it's nighttime. And if I don't want to be this yellow, I go into over here, my effects. I search yellow because I made a custom preset. I have a lot of different versions, but we're just going to use the main one. And I'm going to drop that in. And now it's going to be significantly less yellow. So this preset is made up of another custom LUT from the LUT pack I downloaded. This is Duotone at 0.5. And then I have a custom color board where I moved my mid-tones and my highlights. So that's kind of what made this effect. And then in between days of the week, I really like to add just a black screen. Sometimes I'll add the day of the week if I think it's important, if I want you to know it's Friday or Saturday or something, but a lot of times I'll just do the black screen and that symbolizes usually a new day. So I'm gonna go through and keep fine tuning this video and adding the color grading and the music and the sound effects and transitions and all of that. I feel like now it looks like a bright, beautiful day outside because I've been filming this video now for four and a half hours. A video typically takes me between four and 10 hours to edit. I just went through, I added all the music and sound effects and color grading to all the clips. So I pretty much did it all exactly the same way as I just showed you. Hi. So now I just have to proof watch it and then we'll save it out. So lastly, once the video is done, I have to save it out. So I go up to this export button, press export file. Um, I save it as the same title that I titled it in the first place. In my settings, I have format video and audio, and then I make sure to have H.264. It's going to auto save to Apple ProRes and that's a little big for YouTube. I accidentally uploaded a video once with that file size and it took like four hours to upload. I read somewhere that the H.264 is actually way better for YouTube um, and it's a lot faster to upload. So that's what I do. And I save it in my full videos folder and I press save and then it saves it out. So that's essentially how I edit my vlogs. I don't really do anything too crazy or too fancy with my editing. I always just try to make sure that everything I put into my vlog has a purpose. My rule of thumb is if while I'm watching it, I start to get a little bored or I zone out, I need to take it out because if I'm finding it boring and it's myself, 
no one else is gonna find it interesting. I try to have that. I try to have like a clear beginning, middle, and end. And I try to kind of help that along with the music. You know, the music at the beginning is a little more energetic. At the end of my vlog, I have my music kind of winding down. I try to subconsciously include these aspects into my vlogs, kind of make it feel like you're watching a TV show or you're watching an episode of something. Obviously, it's not like it's gonna have a plot, usually, because <laughs> it's just a vlog, but in my B-roll, I like to make sure that it's color graded and it's clear and concise. I try to only include clips that I think are worth it for you to watch. My biggest thing when it comes to vlogging is to always make the viewer feel included. Whether it's the way I talk, the way I edit, any of it, I always try to make it seem like me and the viewer are spending time together because I think that's the way to keep your viewers engaged and coming back. If they're just watching videos of you doing something with people with no context, they're not going to be as inclined to stay. That's more of a conceptual tip, but that's kind of my basics of how I edit my vlogs. I, I feel like this video wasn't too crazy or like groundbreaking, but I know a lot of people had questions, so hopefully this answered some of your questions. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up. I wanna thank Epidemic Sound again for sponsoring this video. And if you have any questions about editing, how I edit my videos, go ahead and comment them below and I will talk to you next time. Bye.